Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the series on the 1985 300 CD. And today we're going to move to the interior of the vehicle. There's a few items I want to address. One, it doesn't have the original Becker radio. It has, I think, a 1986 or 87 model Becker. So I want to put in the original uh, Becker 612 radio. Uh, we're going to repair one of the visor mirror inserts. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's, uh, we're going to look at the wood trim, make sure all the wood trim is attached correctly. Uh, and we're going to repair a vacuum pod that uh, operates uh, the defroster flap. So let's go ahead and dive in and, and fix these items. There we go. You can see that better. Here's the piece, and it goes uh, right there. And that's very common on these cars. The, uh, the glue or adhesive will fail, and some of the wood trim will come loose. So we're going to go ahead and reattach that. The other thing I want to do, first we're going to address... Uh, uh, we'll do the wood next, but first we want to address the defroster vacuum actuator. And now to do that, we want to take off the driver's side uh, kick panel. And we'll just pry these little, not pry, but really just pop out these little plastic clips under the dash that expose the screws. We're going to go ahead and unscrew these screws under this uh, driver's side kick panel. Okay, there's also a couple of plastic uh, retaining pins that you have to you have to turn 90 degrees or turn 45 degrees and then they slip out. It's either 45 or 90 degrees, something like that. And then we can pull this panel out. And yeah, I don't think this has ever been out of the car. That's incredible original condition. All the insulation is still on the back. So we will delicately just set this up here. Okay, here we are under the dash. There is your uh, cruise control module back there. And we see we have a vacuum pod back there. And there is a vacuum pod right there. Now see, that is a dual vacuum diaphragm. And that allows the uh, defroster flap to open, I think, like halfway or all the way that's why it has two vacuum lines attached but we want to remove this from the car and we'll have to get up let's see if i can record that up there to disconnect it up top there and then you just twist it and it slips out and we're going to rebuild this actuator so first thing i'll do is just pop off these vacuum lines and unfortunately this is something that can't be recorded because i have to crawl up under here but I'll show you once it's out of the car. All right, guys, I've got that pod loose. Couldn't do that on camera. But this is what we're going to go put on the bench and test. And we're going to rebuild it uh, because I think this pod is bad. Okay, so I have our defrost actuator on the bench here. And you can see the defrost actuator is actually a double diaphragm. You can tell that because you have a vacuum port here and a vacuum port here. And why does it have two diaphragms? It's because depending on the setting of the uh, climate control system, sometimes this will be open, uh, the defroster will be open 20% to let a little air out, like recirculation, or it'll be open 80%. So if we pump, let's see, I think this first one, the side one here, okay, good. Under vacuum, it opens it up about 20%. Now, if we pump the one on the bottom, it opens it up the rest of the way and pulls it all the way down. So this diaphragm, if I release it, it goes back up. If I release that one, it goes back up. So this diaphragm is actually not the problem with our defrost vent. So I'm going to put this back in the car, and that narrows it down to... Uh, the Bosch temperature uh, control module, that's a silver box behind the uh, uh, glove box, or one of the little solenoids behind the push buttons on the climate control, or the climate control module itself. So we're going to troubleshoot and figure out which one of those it is. All right, guys, uh, I have this uh, faceplate uh, wood panel off here, and my intuition tells me that it may be the climate control module that is acting up. Um, because I noticed when I pressed the center vent button, the center vents open correctly. 
And when I press the defrost, they close correctly. Um, so it's, it's going to be maybe a solenoid back behind here um, or this climate control module. I'm not really sure which one yet. I just have to do some troubleshooting. And we want to remove this radio anyway. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, we're going to try, let's get this radio out of here because we don't want this radio uh, installed in the car anyway because it's the wrong radio for this car. Okay, and I know you guys can't see this, but up under here we have the solenoids that react to when we push a button on this climate control. And uh, I'll get the camera and show you guys what I'm looking at. Here's the solenoids I was referring to. See the little power plugs to each solenoid right there? And... All right, guys, what I was looking at is, uh, you see way up in there, there's our center dash pod. And I was just making sure these vacuum lines are connected correctly. And I do see the two red lines are, in fact, running down right through there over to that pod on the pass on the driver's side so those are connected correctly okay i have disconnected the vacuum line from the bottom of our vacuum pod here that's what closes the center dash vent and our vacuum gauge is telling me there is no vacuum coming to that line so i'm going to trace that line to see where it goes and why no vacuum is coming to it because vacuum is what actually closes that vent. All right, guys, so what we see here, this line I'm testing that goes to the bottom of that vacuum pod, it is a white stripe on a red line. So it goes right through here. Let's see what that plugs into. Okay, here we are looking under the dash. You can see right there, there's our red line right there with our white stripe. And sure enough, that plugs into the first solenoid here. So that solenoid, when you apply power to it, um, it opens and closes and actuates, uh, lets vacuum flow through it. So I'm guessing something could be wrong with that solenoid. So let's take this solenoid out and bench test it. All right, guys, I think we found our culprit. So this is the solenoid that I just removed for that defroster uh, vacuum actuator. Uh, and this is what they look like in the car. So Mercedes made several, uh, they made two different versions of these. Um, it, it really, it, it, there's no telling which ones they installed on the car. I think it was like whatever part or manufacturer was available at the time of assembly. Uh, because I've seen these in the 85 model. And I've seen these in the 85 model. There were just two different manufacturers. But this is what they look like in the car, right? You have your vacuum lines running along the top. And then uh, your, uh, that supplies the vacuum. And then this runs to the actuator right here. And when power is applied here, the solenoid, I guess, clicks a relay and opens the port and applies vacuum. Now... If I test this, when I have my tester next to me, the one in the car is dead. It is not clicking that relay or the servo. If I click one of these, can you guys hear that? That is clicking the servo and opening. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove, actually I'm going to take this one right here. I like, I like this one that I just tested. I'm going to go ahead and remove this one from the bank of solenoids. And we're going to put this one in the car, and I bet you that is going to resolve our issue. I'm like 99% confident. I shouldn't have said that. I probably just jinxed myself. Again, these are identical components, two different manufacturers. 
Um, and it was just whatever day the car went through the assembly line is which manufacturer's part was installed. Uh, but you can see there's Mercedes logo on there and Mercedes logo on there. This was made by, it looks like Eaton. And this one does not have the name. But I'm going to go ahead and install this on the car and we're going to see if we have resolved the issue. Okay, let me go ahead and crank the car. And we have our new relay installed. And sure enough, guys, we now have a vacuum reading at that port. So let me go ahead and plug back in our actuator. And we're going to see if that now correctly closes uh, the defroster. All right. We have that plugged back in. And... We just turned on our AC. All right, moment of truth. Yes. It has successfully closed our defrost flap. Oh, and we have full AC out of the center vent. Now, if I press uh, this button, we should get see uh, center vents and defrost. Yes, it's working again. Now, if I press this, it should completely close the center correct and we have defrost and now we go back to center vent and these should open up there we go full center vent and our defrost should close nice guys it is working again mission accomplished okay guys now that we have the climate control uh, flaps working correctly uh, I'm going to reassemble the climate control here and but first I want to uh, I mean after I do that I want to put in our correct year model Becker 612 radio speaker wire there's our antenna this is all the factory original wiring it has not been messed up in this car it's in excellent condition and we'll put our power in here okay before we slide it in I just want to make sure that this uh, operates correctly actually let me test the fader for the radio Awesome. Awesome. That's all working correctly. Okay, guys. Uh, got the radio in. Got the actuator flaps working. We're going to glue back in our... Uh, there's our wood trim piece that I want to glue back to the car. Uh, and here is the final thing. I noticed the visor right there. The visor mirror is... The frame had cracked. Uh, now, this is so common on the 123 this is just about every car that i see you have this frame right here it'll crack where these little pegs plug into the frame see this goes down here and we actually i've already removed the insert on this one but you have your mirror insert right there and that plugs in like that so this is so common that i just have a stockpile of original uh there we go these are visor inserts. See, this one's perfect condition. Uh, what I can do is remove this piece and then solder in the connections and then put in a good working insert so our visor mirror will uh, would be working perfect like it did from the factory. Okay, guys, removing these is uh, pretty easy. Um, they're just glued down with uh, 
there's it's like this uh, rubber cement type glue and we can just go around the edges also before I do this I want to clip our power leads here because we are going to connect those to the new one all right we got it almost all the way out just this back corner has a little bit still attached there we go and this is just some uh, glass cleaner just getting some of the residue looks like there was some glue applied right there from a previous repair and I'm just making sure that's all removed there we go we have our leads on the back here and this foam is often attached to the lead so I just like to cut the foam off rip our lead back here there we go Now, I'm just going to trim away some of the old glue that was on here previously. So we get a very flush fit down in there. All right. There we go. Now we have a nice flat surface that we can glue into this one. Okay, so before I do that, I want to strip back our leads here. Now, before I actually glue anything in there, and before I solder these leads, I want to wire them together temporarily. And we want to test it to make sure it works. And I'm going to get my 12 volt power supply because the power comes through uh, the clip in the in the headliner or the header panel and goes to these two uh, metal ports right here and that supplies uh, power. So we're just going to open that up and we'll apply power and this should light up. Boom. All right, let me just hold them there. All right, it should correctly close. It should turn out the light, good. When you open, it should turn on the light. Perfect, exactly how it should be. All right, guys, uh, I have to solder these and then uh, wrap those lines and glue this back in here. So give me a second to solder these connections right here and then I'll be back in a minute. Okay guys, I've got these connections soldered and I just put a couple of wraps of electrical tape around it so they don't touch and uh, short out. If they touch and short out, it'll pop your fuse. That's why I have it wrapped in electrical tape. And the way I like to uh, bond it back in there, I just use some JB Clear Weld Quick Setting Epoxy. Um, and it doesn't take much, guys. We'll just squirt a little bit out right there. And you apply it around the edges. I'll show you how I like to apply it. Don't use super glue, guys. The super glue will react with the plastic and cause like, uh, it'll cause it to turn white wherever it touches. Uh, don't use super glue. Okay, so where do you apply the glue? See where it was from the factory, like here, here and along the edge that's where the factory applied it right along the edges here right there they put some right here right there and then we'll put some around the back side here and right back here and right over there okay let me wipe off this little drip I got right there okay and the way you want to stick it in go with the back side first 
and let's tuck our wire. There we go. Make sure I don't get any epoxy on here. There we go. Put the back side in first and then slip your front side right down in there. And guys, that <laughs> is not coming out. Now, we will let this sit. And what I like to do too is turn it over. Hang on, I'll show you. And then set that down on the towel. All right, then I get another clean towel. And guys, here is one of the um, plates from my hydraulic press. I just like to set that right there. It weighs maybe 10 pounds, and that will press that. Perfect. That will press the uh, new mirror into there, and uh, you know hold it firmly while this takes. This takes like five or 10 minutes to set. We'll leave it there for like 10 or 15 minutes. Then it'll set and it'll be really held in there good. And then we'll remove that and it'll be good to put back in the car. Okay guys, while the visor is drying over there, I went ahead and reapplied the uh, wood trim right here. And the way you reapply that, this works the best. I've tried just about everything. Uh, this is, it's Gorilla Glue and it's super glue, but it's the gel based. So when you squirt it out, you know, you could squirt it across here and it doesn't run. It's not runny super glue. You squirt it here and it stays right there. It's a gel. And you coat this on the back and uh, that makes a really awesome bond. And it's great for doing the wood trim on the dashes. Uh, so that's been reattached. And I think our visor is dry. So let's go ahead and get that and put it in the car. All right, our visor is dry. And these are held in there with two Phillips head. Let me orient this the right way. Let's see, I think we're gonna go something like that. Here we go. Here we'll put that one goes right there. Fold that up and we put one on the back side. All right, guys, there we go. A perfectly repaired and functioning visor, just like they came from the factory. And the passenger side is already good. I don't know if y'all can see that in the video there. There we go. There's the passenger side. That one. No cracks in that one. That one's in excellent shape. And there we go, guys. Visor repaired. All right, guys. The final thing I'm going to do in this video, of course, I have to reassemble the ashtray and some of the wood trim in the car. I'll just show you that when I'm done. Uh, but we have the gauge cluster out. And this is something that you literally have to do on every single 123. You have to change the dimmer switch. The dimmer switch, uh, they just, with age, uh, the potentiometer uh, just breaks. And you just have to put in a new one. That's just how it goes. Mercedes still sells the part. And uh, so you can get them pretty easily. And uh, you just have to do this, guys. All it does is just pulls right off of here. There we go. And we'll set that broken one aside. And we have our good one here. Let's put that back in. And there we go. Pretty easy change. And that's it for that, guys. Let me just make sure it operates. All right, let's go ahead and get that back in the car and show our working dimmer switch. Okay guys, the gauge cluster is reinstalled in the car. Let's turn out the shop lights 
and make sure everything's working correctly. Okay, here we are in the car. I'm gonna turn out my camera light and we're gonna test our new potentiometer. Okay guys, I don't know if you guys can see that. My camera doesn't pick it up very well, but you can see our cluster. It's a lot brighter than what you guys see in the camera. There we go, it's dimming and brightening. And sorry, there's not really anything I can do about that with the camera. Let's see if I can pick up down here better. And then when we dim and brighten all the lights on the climate control correctly dim and brighten. And again, I don't know if you can see these up here, uh, all the antenna switches. I'll show you what I'm recording. So all these switches, but the camera just doesn't uh, pick it up well. Let's see. Yeah, you guys can't see it, but those are also dimming and brightening. And then down, oh, the window switches pick up well. See, those are correctly dimming and brightening. So that is mission accomplished. Um, so guys, that's it for this video. I'm going to get the interior reassembled. And uh, Monday, I go over to the alignment shop and uh, get the new tires and alignment done. So hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.